When trying to measure the influence of a patent, um, what the field has been doing is looking at how many children this patent generate. And, and those children are reflected in the citations of other patents. So a patent citing another patent is a child, technological child of that original patent. Uh, what we are doing here is trying to capture the ripple effects that a patent has on the technological field. And, and that is not captured by the children because these are the children of the children and citations don't reflect that. So we come with a, uh, up with a measure of the influence of a patent that really uh, tells you what is the size and, and, and how big and interconnected is the genealogical tree of descendants that follow uh, a patent. There are patents that do not have a lot of impact because they don't have a lot of children, but those children really spur innovation after that and really a big tree follows. So by looking at this influence variable, we are capturing those ripple effects that are not necessarily captured by the direct count of citations. We tried to see what are the drivers of this influence and, and we went back to this idea of breakthrough inventions. And when you hear about breakthrough inventions, you consistently hear that is that they open new streams, there is think out of the box that creates these inventions that are very, very influential and, and create new areas of research. So we look at when inventors went to different areas of knowledge and brought uh, novel ideas to solve problems that have not done before. Uh, so we look at this connection between this spanning, as we call it, of knowledge bases and the effect on the influence of a patent. What, what we found is that these, the, the, the inventors that use this novel knowledge, that pioneer knowledge, the usage of knowledge in an area, are really coming up with uh, in, patents with higher influence. Uh, so that, that is a, a, a significant result and, and we can see an increase of something like 25% on influence for all the patents, but even more important for, for the breakthrough patents, that increase is more than 100% on the influence. The patent that was the reason why the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1986 was awarded is a patent for the scanning tunneling microscope. Uh, what happened by the 80s was that the technology of the microscope has hit a wall. Uh, through the electronic uh, microscope, people was able to see a molecule, but not beyond that. It was by bringing uh, quantum physics knowledge into the design of the microscope that they came up with a scanning tunneling, tunneling microscope which was able to see an atom laying on a surface. And this has uh, promoted great advancements in the field of nanotechnology. You can control that, you can manage that. It's very difficult to do it if, uh, as an individual. Uh, to really decide I'm going to be a, a span knowledge in this solution, for this solution. But when you are managing a team, you can do that. One of the problems when you are managing a team of innovators is that if all the innovators know the same, all the inventors know the same, they are going to be very efficient in coming up with solutions, with patents. Uh, the problem is at some point they will hit a wall and they will not be able to move beyond to find another solution. By managing the, the team membership, you can bring somebody who is very knowledgeable on an area that nobody is, and that will help the team to span the no, to a novel area. And that is likely to generate patents with higher influence. If you think of the patenting process as a problem solving uh, uh, process, uh, that also applies, it's not just to find a technological solution for a semiconductor or a new microscope. Uh, it, that also applies in, in business, how to keep moving toward a solution. Mm -hmm.